Well, today we're going to talk about how God sees the good in you. It may be a refresher course, but God eliminated some things to me with, with uh, Moses, how God saw something good in him. So we're going to turn to Exodus chapter 2, and we'll start with uh, verse 1. It says, And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him for um, she took him for an ark of bulrushes and dabbed him with slime. So that part, you know, where she tries to hide Moses and and therefore you you guys know that part of the story. That's not what I'm gonna talk about today. I just want to talk about how and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. So um, God illuminated that to me, and she saw something that was good in him. Not just good, but she saw what God saw in him. And we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 11 real quick, and it's going to confirm it in this part two. Hebrews 11, verse 23. It says, By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. So the king, he wanted to destroy all the, these little little babies, the boys, and because he was afraid that his kingdom was going to be destroyed. He was afraid. But God's bigger than all that. God saw something good in Moses. But more importantly, his mom saw what God saw in him. She saw that he was going to be used for something great. He was going to be used for something mighty, for something powerful. And she knew that God was going to one day use him for such a time as this, for what he was called to do. So I wanted, that was my part. I wanted to point that part out. But Moses' parents saw something in Moses that God placed in him. Moses' parents knew Moses was destined for great things. And how many of you guys know that God has a destiny for each and every single one of us, right? We, I can't do what you're called to do, and you can't do what I'm called to do. We all have a destiny. We all have a purpose that God put inside of us. We just got to follow the roadmap to what God has for us. Therefore, Moses' parents stood in great faith. Now, they had they didn't have the Holy Spirit then. This is before the Holy Spirit come, came, and they still stood in such great faith that God was going to use Moses. And they weren't afraid of these kings. They weren't afraid of what they were going to do to them or to Moses. They, they even risked their lives. They risked Moses' life. But they trusted God, that God would preserve Moses. You know, and, and here in day and age, I thought this would be like such a great, like, uh, pro-life type message and stuff like that, and God pointed that, that out to me as well. But therefore, Moses' parents stood in such great faith to do whatever it took to preserve his life. <clears throat> so in Exodus chapter 2, this is where we see that Levi and his wife, Moses' parents, stepped out in such great faith. They feared God more than they feared man. And how many guys know that we got to have that fear of God, no matter what, no matter what tries to come our way, no matter what, um, I don't know, big people say, like government or whatever, I don't know, just whatever. You just got to stand on God's word. You got to put the fear of God first and trust God and do what he says. And they did that, and God preserved them, preserved Moses as well. Um, they feared more. They feared God more than man. And while there was a decree to kill all the newborn boys, Moses' parents saw something good in him. They saw a future for Moses. Right? They saw something, a future. Uh, God sees that in us. Whenever He even saw it before we were ever born. Right. He He knew when we were going to be born. He knew when when we were supposed to be in, brought into this earth. And he placed us in this day and age for this time, for this for this season, because he knew what he called us to do. So they saw that God was going to use Moses one day for his glory. Okay? So they preserved Moses, and we all know that Pharaoh's daughter took Moses in to be his mother and raised him as his own. So God used that and 
you know, further for God's kingdom. But Moses' life didn't stop there. God eventually used him to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, and Moses became a great man of God. But see, Moses didn't see the good in him. Sometimes we don't always see the good in us, what God sees. But God always sees that, and we got to be reminded of that. And Moses, he's like, I can't be used by you, God. I have a stutter. You know, he, he was, he did. He had a stutter. And so therefore God brought Aaron to help him out. But God knew. He's like, I chose you. You know, I want you to do this. And so God validated Moses and said, you tell them I am is the one that sent you. I am. I am. That's the word for God. I am. I am goes before you. And so Moses was validated by him. And so when God validates us, when he puts his stamp of approval on us, you know, there's nothing that we, we can't do. We can do all things through Christ, which gives us strength. So God has placed something inside each and every one of us that he has destined and called us to do. So let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 7. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. use my paper. <laughs> All right. But he have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And so that's the key. It's, it's not in our strength that God desires to use. It's God's strength. He wants his power, his, his goodness to run through us. And we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body of the dying Lord Jesus, that in the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. But we have that earthen treasure inside of us. We all have that treasure. And we just got to allow the Holy Spirit just to... Pull that out of us. Just be teachable and allow God to use you. Jeremiah 29, 29 11. <laughs> Sorry. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For he has thoughts of good for us and not of evil, but to give us a future and a hope or an expected end. And he has that for us. He has that future and he has that hope and that expected end, just, expected end just as Moses was used. He had that future and he had that hope. And <clears throat> excuse me, and Moses' mom, she saw that in him. She's like, I, I'm not going to allow anything to happen to this baby because God's got something great that he's going to do through him. Isaiah chapter 43. Let's go to Isaiah 43. Verses 1 through 7. But now saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. So they're showing us that God formed us. God made us. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. God has called each and every single one of us to do something that he wants to do through us. But we got we to gotta take that. We got to accept that and allow God to do that in us. When thou passest through the waters, I will bring, or I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overthrow thee, or overflow thee, sorry. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall a flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, um, Ethiopia, and said Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, I will give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east to gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. So when the enemy tries to say things in your head, oh, you're, you won't do this or do that, 
No, God's word says, I formed you, I created you for my glory. You know, you, you remind uh, God of his promises and you put the enemy underneath your feet and say, no, God created me for such a time as this. Amen? And the Lord spoke to me last night and says, faithful is he that calleth you and faithful is he that will do it. If he called you, he's faithful to call you, he's faithful to do it. But you got to also do your part. It's a two-way street. And I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it to the coming of Jesus Christ. So his promise is to be with us and never leave us or forsake us. He promises to go with us. And God's called us by name. God has called us with a holy calling. It's not something to take lightly. You know, he called us with such a holy calling. And he paid that ultimate price for us in order for us to be free, in order for us to do what he called us to do. And it's a holy calling. It's sacred to him. It means a lot to him. Not only did Moses' parents see the good in him, but Paul saw something good in Timothy. God, or Paul something saw, saw something good in Timothy. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Second Timothy chapter 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son. So Paul, he was like his spiritual father. He was like his own son to him, okay? Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. Timothy, the beloved. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that is in thee also. So he knew he had that unadulterated, uh, full of faith, just as his uh, grandmother uh, Lois and his mother Eunice did. He knew that they were great uh, mothers of faith, and he knew that that same faith was passed down into him, that he would, that he would walk that kind of faith out as well. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. So God called us to stir up that gift within us each and every single day. We have the, those gifts. Kind of think of like a like a soup or whatever. All your ingredients, when it it boils down to the bottom, right? If you don't stir it, it's all going to get all nasty and gross and stuff. But when you stir it, you get to taste all the flavors, all those ingredients. When you stir up the gifts of God within you, that's what you're doing. You, all those things start coming to the surface. And God desires to use all those things. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God, so Paul, he was encouraging him, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. God's going to use you mightily. You know, I, God, God said, um, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, love and a sound mind. That power, that's authority. He's given us authority. And having that sound mind, that is something that is precious. And when you've not had that sound mind, and you, you have that, that is something to take hold of. That is precious. And we've all been given the mind of Christ, right? So Paul saw, Paul saw the unfeigned faith in Timothy and his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice, and Paul was persuaded it was in Timothy also. Paul saw, saw something good in Timothy, something great, and encouraged Timothy to not be afraid. But that his authority and but he has authority, love, and a sound mind. Paul saw that in Timothy. Um, so we need to start seeing ourselves as God sees us. We need to start seeing that sometimes we see ourselves just we think these these, you know, thoughts or whatever, but you got to crush those. you got to start seeing us the way that God sees us. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah 
Jeremiah 1, verses 4 through 9. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the mountain. So before God formed us, he knew us. He already knew our name. He knew what we were destined to do. He knew what we were called to do. And, you know, when he was on the cross, we were on his mind. You know, he knew that we would be coming in the future. And that's, just think about that. If you just meditate upon that, you know, think of how much love that is. Um, and I have ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O oh Lord, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. So Jeremiah, he dealt with the same thing that we deal with on a daily basis. Well, I can't do that. I'm just a youth. David, he thought that. I'm just a young boy, you know. And Moses, he thought that. I can't because I stuttered. But what did Jesus say? What did God say? But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. Don't say, Say not, I, I can't. Say not, I'm short. Or say not, I'm, well, I'm not as old as this person. No, don't say those things. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I sit, that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am, there's I am again, with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. So there it is. He said, Be not afraid. I, I have anointed you. I have put my words in my mouth. You speak what I tell you to speak, and then he'll be fine. We gotta remind ourselves that. Speak what I tell you to speak and you'll be fine. Don't insert your foot. <laughs> so Genesis, we're gonna to go to Genesis chapter one. We can be guilty of that. We try to get ahead of God, and that's not always good. Verse 26 through 31. It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish and the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And you guys know all that. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So he created us male and female. Not anything else, but that's it. It's in the word. <laughs> And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish in the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb hearing of the... So he's given, all, given us all these things. But verse 31, it says, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So remember, God made you, and he said, it is very, not it is good, it is very good. You know, think of something when you eat, oh, it's not just good, it's very good. <laughs> when God made you, he said it is very good. You are God's masterpiece. He created you. You were made by the greatest artist of the world, and that is God the Father. So God sees the good in us before anyone else, and he... And as we spend time with God, the more that we spend time with God, the more that we will see that in ourselves. Those around us, to, um, sorry, um, the more that we see the goodness and, and love will flow out of us to those around us. And then it is our turn to start seeing the good in others. So the more that we see the good in us, the more that we'll be able to see the good in others. You can't love somebody else unless you love yourself first. You've got to start by loving yourself first in order to love somebody else. All right. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, um, 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So you are new. You are created in him if you made him the Lord of your life. And God does not see our old selves, our old life before Christ. When we are a Christian and born again, we start or we start seeing God transform them into who God is calling them to be. So when you start walking that out, you, you get to see that. You start seeing it in yourself and you get to see it in others. All right, I'm done. <laughs> I think Becky's going to come up.